Well, you let me know when you're you're, you're relaxed and you caught a breath and uh. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm okay. ready. You know me. I'm usually ready. I know. I appreciate <laughs> you uh, do, taking the time out to do this. So. You bet, sweetheart. Well, welcome to this week's episode of Mimosas with Michael. And today we're having mimosas with uh, famed actress Dee Wallace. How are you today? I'm fine. I'm very in- much enjoying my mimosa with you. Well, mimosas, <laughs> I think mimosas are the best way to just sit and talk and get to know somebody. Yeah, why not? And it's, uh, it's so great. You just lay back and enjoy the beautiful Sunday air and just drink a little mimosa. That's the best way to talk to a friend. I agree. So I wanted to um, have you on the show because now that we're into the month of October, one of the things I think is important is um, when it comes to the genre of horror, horror in general, I feel like women, I mean, they're so important in a movie, but they don't, people always want to to care about the bad guy, you know, like when something like with Friday the 13th, you know, but but Nancy was so amazing as the lead actor. So I wanted to really, what you thought about women in the genre of horror. So that's kind of what I want I to talk about over you, I don't really think you'd have horror if you didn't have women. Because who's the bad guy going to stalk, after all? You know? Yeah, that's true. I mean, we're the ones that you cheer for. We're the ones that are trying to get away. We're the ones that set up the whole fear element uh, of the genre. From the very beginning of horror films, women that's true. played that part in horror films. And, um, you know, personally, I love the fact that um, horror films offer you the possibility of, you know, a really full, emotional, lively performance. Makes you, True. as an actress, feel like, you know, you've really accomplished something, so... I think it's true. And it's always nice because at the very end, you always have that one couple that's like running away and then the guy trips and he ends up getting killed. And it's always down to like the girl who has to like save the day. Absolutely. I mean, you know, for years and generations, it's it's been the young girl and the audience inside screaming, no, don't go out there. Right. <laughs> right. So it's, I think we're just an inherent part of, of the genre. But I do have to say this. My sound engineer, Richard, is a huge fan of Cujo. So, oh, good choice. <laughs> so he just I want to ask a little bit about what it was like filming Cujo, if that's okay. Filming Cujo was hell. <laughs> was it really? It was the hell. Hardest, the hardest thing I have ever done, just because, you know, I mean, physically and emotionally. Really? It was just, oh, my God, it was all fight or flight for eight weeks, you know, and um, we were shooting in Northern California. Everybody always asked me, oh, my God, how did you get through that film at, in that heat? And we were actually very cold. Really? <laughs> yeah, it was rainy and cold up there, and uh, we had, I, I finally asked him to put a heater in the front of the car because da- Danny Poor little thing was chattering. Uh-huh. His teeth were chattering. We were so cold. And, of course, they were spritzing me down before every take so that I would look hot and sweaty. Of course, yeah, and, right. Uh, yeah, in the cold. So, uh, but it was just, it was a gruesome film to shoot and my favorite film that I've ever done. Real? Oh, there you go, Richard. You just made Richard very happy. Thank you. Thank you, Dee. Yeah. I love that movie so much. It's it's. Uh, uh, thank you. It's so thank fantastic. You. Me too. It looked thank it looked you. gruesome to shoot. <laughs> it was well, you know, and every scene I had was with a, a five year old and a dog, right? Yeah, so right. I had to be on every single solitary minute. Ugh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, and, you did. You did great. It's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. And um, what was it like? So you've you've done quite a, a number of horror films over your your whole career. I have. I'm. I have earned 
uh, I've earned the title of Screen Queen for sure. Uh, without a doubt. <clears throat> one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. I, I actually, I've worked with you. I think you're one of the most wonderful people I've ever had the pleasure of working with. Oh, thank you. You're very sweet. And we've, we've kept our friendship over the years. That's why we deserve to have a mimosa together. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, and I, I think that's, that's part of the lovely part of our business is when you can keep coming back together and really, you know, create a friendship. Exactly. It's, yeah, it makes it makes all the parts of your life come together then. Um, so let's talk uh I don't know, what do you want to talk about? We can talk about some of the movies. I mean I know this isn't horror specific, but you did do E. T. and you did the howling and the hails of eyes. You wanna talk about any of those? The frighteners. Oh yeah, the frighteners. Frighteners and critters and yeah, I'm I have a lot of them under my belt and you know, two of them are, two more are coming out this year. Ooh, what, what are those ones? Let's talk about that. Uh, Red Christmas, which I was also a producer on. Okay. And we just sold it to Netflix. It'll be out in October. Ooh, congratulations. Oh, congratulations. Oh, my gosh. If you're a horror buff, you are going to love this film. It's really different. Okay. And uh, gives me a chance to do that tour de force kind of part like I did in Cujo. And oh. then um, Death House. Oh, yeah, a lot Death of House. People, yeah, we've heard a lot about Death House. They've been pumping it for a year now. And it's coming out in theaters in January, Regal Theaters in January. Wow, congratulations. That'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, and I just filmed a, a little cameo on a really fun project called Ouija House. Like the Ouija board. Oh, really? Uh, with uh, yeah, Misha Barton and Chris Mulkey and a lot of oh, I've worked with uh, both of those really actors. iconic actors. Yeah, are in it. Wait, you worked with so, uh, you worked with Chris Mulkey on Grimm. I did. I do remember that you guys played uh, his fa his parents of um. Yeah, Chris is Chris is a buddy. Yeah, I worked with him a couple of times. Chris is great. Yeah, he's a great guy. And now and, and now a you're great musician. Too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. His band. He lives out in Venice, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, and now you're you're uh, you've passed the torch on to your daughter as well, Gabrielle. Yes, yeah, and she's... you know she's had huge success uh, this year. Her first short film that she co-wrote, co-produced, and starred in has received a lot of uh, a lot of awards for the film and for her as mm -hmm. best actor. Yeah, it's, and she has a love for horror as well. She has a love for acting, you know. Yeah. I mean, I don't go out looking for horror films, um, but it's often horror films that really um, excite me because I just like to do really good emotional work. And like the horror. So uh, a lot of Gabrielle's films uh, aren't strictly horror; they're suspense or relationship films. Or oh, okay, yeah. Well, I think it's what's great about the horror fans is they're so loyal. I mean, especially because you've done so many horror movies. So uh, horror fans are the best fans in the world. I love them beyond what I can tell you. They're good people. They have huge hearts, and they are you're right, loyal to a fault. <laughs> so yeah, I I love going out and. Uh, doing the conventions and stuff so I can meet all of them. I hear great stories. I always inevitably see product that I have never seen before. You know, you think after being in the business 45 years, you've seen it all, but somehow right. my fans always seem to find a poster or a memorabilia that I just... Uh, oh, that's so yeah, awesome. That I've never seen, so... <laughs> They're tenacious. Oh, it's tenacious, and that's important. That's why we're able to. I mean, look at the success of that movie, Get Out, and now It. Not that long ago. I mean, horror is here to stay. It's not going anywhere. It never was. It's I know, I th but I feel like people the all the time. Of our business, it's just too bad that they don't recognize these kind of films for the substance they are when the awards come along. Yeah, well, and people always ask me, like, why does horror do so well? And I used to do that. I used to get that question a lot when I ran my film festival. And I, I, the importance I always tell them is those days that you're frustrated and you just want to take your aggression out. Like horror film is that aggression, <laughs> in a sense, you know. And it's, you it's know, 
Well, yeah, we give people permission to be afraid when it, you know, they wouldn't probably own up to it in their life and and cry and cling on to each other. And, you know, it serves a really good purpose for um, allowing people to expel some of that stuff in in an acceptable way. Yeah. So are you are you yourself a fan of horror? Um, I'm a fan of of good horror. Yeah, I'm I not like a that. fan of the slasher films, which is what uh, we call a lot of the slasher films horror now. Yeah, and, I guess that's um, true. Yeah, you know, a good horror film has really solid relationships built into it, mm-hmm. and a, a story that grows and develops and, uh, you know, instead of, hi, here's our six characters, watch how gruesomely we can kill each one of them. That's really not a true horror genre film. No, I agree. I think that, and I was telling my friend, because my friend and I went to go see It, and I said, I think that's one of the things I liked about the new It, was it was both sort of scary and touching, because you had this this movie about these young kids that were facing, but it was not just about the monster is about their friendship as well because they were all outcasts. They were brought together by this bully. And it, at the end of the day, it really was just a movie, which was. Well, I wish I could comment. I haven't seen it yet. No, it's I well, you gotten... need to see it. It's actually really good. Good. But well, I, I, that will push me further to go catch it. Well, that, but that's just my honest opinion. I do. I mean, at the end of the day, like a horror film is still a movie and it has to have a good story. Like I think that's why something like Got Get Out did so well. It, it was a really good yeah. story, and, it's, and and it had a social commentary. Which, yeah. It had a purpose. It had you know a statement that the film was making, and uh, yeah, all that makes for much better film. Yeah. Um. Have you ever worked with any female directors, especially within horror? Um. Within horror. Or just in general. Mm. I have worked with some female directors okay. uh, in TV, mm. um, but no, not – well, I had a couple of really great female directors that I liked uh, on my series, Just Add Magic. Okay. You can't, you can't really describe it as horror, um, yeah. you know, even though it's about a magic cookbook. It's a family show and – Oh God! And okay. even young kids can can watch it, you know. But um, I I like working with women as long as women are strong enough not to let the men tell them what to do. Yeah, and that's <laughs> that's sadly one of the bad. Yeah, one of the things about this industry that's tough because it's so male dominated, and it's. Well, yeah, we're working on it. We're chipping away. No, you are. I've worked, time. I've worked with some amazing female directors. I know there's some out there. <clears throat> you know, a couple, a few years ago, we had Mary Lambert um, at the festival. Have you ever worked with Mary? You know Mary from Pet Cemetery. I have not. Yeah, sure I do. Yeah, she's fantastic. I tried to have her on the show. I haven't heard back from her, so maybe she'll be on a future episode. But <clears throat> oh, good. I hope so. And I like it because she's um she's smallish in stature. I think she's probably five five or five six, but. She carries herself in such a way where you really think she's taller, which I thought was so great when I met her, that she just has this presence about her. And you look at her and you're like, this is definitely somebody who's had to like, who's understood, which is why I really want to talk to her, is that she's understood about having to be in a, in a male-dominant industry. I mean, especially being a director. I can imagine how many of the crew members around her have had tried to like swing their weight. And so that's why I, I, I always want to, I'm always intrigued about like, being a woman director or some, <clears throat> I mean, it, I, it's, it's different for me because I'm a white male, but um, because I grew up being gay, I think sometimes people look at that as like a smallish sort of handicap. But with women, it just seems like it doesn't matter how good you are, men sort of keep you in this place. So I'm so glad well, that. Yeah, I mean, look at politics. It's, it's yeah. the same thing, you know. We're still, we're still just trying to be seen as people. Yeah. Now, I have to say, um, there's maybe been a couple of times in my career yeah. where I felt I wasn't respected because I was a woman, yeah. but, but most of my career, I haven't 
experienced that at all. I've just been accepted for the the creative person that I am for the course. I also have to say that most of the parts I play yeah. are really strong ball buster women. That's true. I even worked have, at the movie I worked with you on, you were the same way. Uh, oh, well, thank you. <laughs> no, it, well, you were great to work with, but yeah, the character is definitely a, a ball buster. Well, and uh, ball busters with vulnerability, those are my specialties. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever thought about directing? Um, I have actually directed theater. Uh, oh, I, nice. I don't want to direct. I wouldn't direct a movie or TV unless I uh, had creative control on it, which yeah. is just about like saying I could never direct TV. <laughs> <laughs> uh, independence, maybe. Okay. But TV, there's way too many votes. In TV. Oh, that's actually, It gets yeah. so watered down. The studio votes and then the producers who write everything vote and they tell the director what to do. That's and, true, yeah. And, you know, it just, do, it, do, it, um, it waters down the, the creative perspective you're trying to present too much. Do you think Netflix and those kind of companies are changing that because sometimes no, you don't really. No, I don't. Interesting. I'm. I'm I think. I think all of the new media are opening up a lot of more opportunities. Of course, yeah. For people on both sides of the camera. Yeah. And um, the studios have a lot of control still over uh, the programming that they're doing. And um, the producers are the writers. And yeah. uh, I mean, it's just becoming, uh, at least in the world that I work in, maybe this is not true across the board. I can only go on my own experience that directors and actors um, are being given much less power, mm. creative power on the set. And it's too bad because uh, plays and movies and TV are meant to be collaborative efforts. Uh, they're, they're meant to come together and everybody go, oh, what about this and what about that? And I have to tell you, every major director that I've ever worked for and with mm -hmm. worked that way. Bring in your ideas, Dee, and what are your ideas? And, oh, my gosh, that's a great idea. Well, what do you think about this, Dee? Oh, good. That's, uh, wow. And and then that leads me to another idea. And, and then, the you know, um, the cinematographer helps yeah. create the mood, and the editor then, you know, has the final word. Uh, it, it's got to be a collaborative thing. I agree. You miss a lot of the magic. Yep. I agree. Yeah, sometimes you have that one person who just wants to control everything, and you hire all these people that know what they're doing, and then you don't let them do it. Yeah. Yeah. And you lose. Yeah. Whoever that person is, they, they lose, because it's the magic in those moments that really make the difference. Well, I found that out when I, when I write and direct, is that <clears throat> I could create this sort of world, but when I bring you in to play this particular character, you're that character. You know, you're this one piece, and if I don't allow you to be that character and, and, and do it fully, then really I'm only hindering both you on the project. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you know, the director has to have the vision. That's his job. He has to know ultimately um, what he wants to say in the piece and, and the look of it and the vision of it, and then be open to everybody else's wonderful ideas. Yeah. Um, and he can say no, but he can also say yes. And that's uh, every big director, Blake Edwards, Peter Jackson, Joe Dante, Steven Spielberg, Louis Teague, all of them. Yeah. All of them um, saw the magic in a moment that happened and expanded on it that wasn't there. That's how it should be, yeah. Because it should it, be. Yeah. 
And then they probably got something amazing that they weren't expecting to get that they're sitting there in post-production. Always. Yeah. Always. Yeah. But, you know, when you come in and you go, no, this is the only idea that can be, you know, explored and and it's got to be done this way, you know, it just shuts everybody down, I think. Yeah. No, I, I agree. And I, I, I'm so glad to hear you say that. Thank you. Because I say that to a lot of people all the time because in my my real job, I'm a script supervisor and I'm always sort of in the middle and there's times that I'll try uh-huh. and I try not to give creative feedback too much, but sometimes there's probably a specific way to shoot something that might make it easier or better or different. And sometimes well, I, I get know, shut down. Like, I, I'm not going to mention the show, but okay. there was this huge, like five minute scene and it, there were dolly shots and we had to stop on marks and I had to break down on cue three-fourths of the way through it and we got it in one take the camera got it the sound got it the performances got it yeah and i had inverted five words and the writer director said no you you guys have to do it again because it has to be exactly the way it's written (sighs) now for me that's bullshit that's egotistical (laughs) because you invoke the emotion yeah and 17 takes later because oh. the airplanes would come over or there would be a bobble, you know, yeah. uh, on the camera or sound, in, you know. And, you know, when I watched it, they freaking used the first one. Of course they did, yeah. <laughs> so that's how it always works. a waste of everybody's time and, and it, it's just wasteful. It's yeah. just bloody wasteful and egotistical. Yeah. So I, I don't get it, but... And that's the thing, by the 17th that's take... That's why I like independent films and really big films, because you don't run into that too much. So true. So let's, since, we're in, since we're in the month of October and we're, we're focusing on horror, do you have any fun stories from The Hills Have Eyes? Both Richard and I are a fan of that movie. Oh, good God, do you have an hour? Well, first <laughs> of all, uh, you know, that was when... That was really my first film. I had done a religious film before that. Okay. But th- this was my first, like studio film. Oh, nice. And um, we had to drive to the Mojave Desert from L.A. every day, so that was hard. They, wow. We all, they only had one trailer for all of us, <sighs> and the damn septic tank went out <laughs> in the middle of the night. I mean, it really was let's put on a show. It was another tough shoot. Um, but we, we all pulled together. I mean, they... You know, and what, they got a lot of very substantial actors together. And, I mean, who would think that now it would still be a cult film, right? So, I mean, yeah, crazy. so true. Just crazy. Um, what was Wes Craven like? Oh, Wes was beautiful. Just think of a very quiet college professor. That's what he was like. I've ne- Wow, I've never been described like that. I like it. And... Um, and of course, I had to have that freaking tarantula on me, Ugh, no. which they said, "Oh, don't worry, D. You know, there, you know, all those stories—they're not true. They don't really bite." And it, well, so afterwards, you know, I go over to talk to the guy who's the tarantula wrangler, and he says, "Oh no, they bite. It's just I milked him before I put him on me." So, <laughs> oh, wow! Aren't you glad they didn't tell you that beforehand? Well, yes, well. And, uh, yeah, there were some there were some uh, accidents. We were we were working with a lot of non-union people. Wow! And um, uh, we had a lot of squib, you know, squib work. Oh yeah. Um, and um, I was supposed to be up next, but my makeup wasn't finished. And Virginia, who played my mother, uh, said, "Well, I'll go. My makeup's finished." And so. She went out. Well, they didn't tie the squib down far enough, and and it moved on her when they put it off, and she she had some pretty severe injuries. From oh it. wow! So you know, th- stuff like this happens on almost every set that has a lot of stunts and you know stuff like that. Yeah, so. of course. I just want to know how you milk a. How do you milk a tarantula? <laughs> I was not there, darling. Like, no, I'm just, I guess you, all I can think you about. actually do 
milk them to get their poison out of their fangs or whatever it is. Ugh. I don't know. All I know is I had the bloody thing on me thinking it was just fine, whatever. Really it wasn't. actually Ugh. probably wasn't. See, and everybody thinks it's so glamorous sometimes. So we have to wrap yeah, up. Movie making is not usually glamorous. No, you know it's that. it's afterwards when it's done and you're sitting in the theater going, I'm glad we're not doing that anymore. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Cujo is my favorite film, but my God. But it was a tough I shoot. Mean, they, taught, they treated me for exhaustion for three weeks after that. Wow. Yeah. That's intense. Blew out my adrenals. I mean, it was a tough shoot. Uh, you're so amazing. I appreciate you taking the time out of your uh, busy schedule to have a mimosa with me. My great pleasure, Michael. You're a doll as always. Thank you. <laughs> you're so. Um, I'll put all of your information on the website so that people can check out your movies. Um, but we're okay, gonna, cool. But I'm gonna um, do one last toast to you, to D Wallace. Um, it's always oh, a let's clink. Uh, let's clink to. Beautiful friendship and well-deserved careers and continuing success. There we go. Amen to that. You have a you have a great and wonderful uh, Halloween, and uh, I will uh, I'll definitely keep in touch, and I look forward to uh, seeing some of your future work. Oh yeah, you're gonna love Red Christmas, you guys. Go out and look for it. All right. Love you, sweetheart. And we're gonna love watch you. we're gonna watch Cujo right now. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Love don't, you. don't get too scared, honey. Oh, never. <laughs> Take, okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone, for listening to Mimosas with Michael. Again, that was Dee Wallace. You can check her out and uh, look on the website, michaelwithmimosa.com, for some of her future work. Mimosaswithmichael.com, you silly goose. That's what I have you for, Richard. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> have a great, Have a great weekend. 